Okay, so we're going to start off with the Sim Vertex. I like how it looks. I like how it feels. I like the, the throw. The neutral is like rock solid, right? Like, you know, there's absolutely no side-to-side -side play until you, you, you know, press on it considerably, right? Uh, the gates feel well-defined. I feel like just, just the general distance you have to travel to get into the gear is more pleasant, and it's kind of more like a regular road car. You know, the BDH is modeled after, you know, race car transmissions, like super precise, but there's a little bit more satisfaction out of, of just the, the pure distance it takes to get into gear. This is a five in reverse model. They do make add-ons to, uh, to actually make it to where you can have more gears. The individually adjustable gates, so first and second, third and fourth, fifth and sixth, they're all independently adjustable. Yeah, if you have a particular H pattern gearbox you want to replicate and maybe your first and second gears on your car are kind of sticky, you can kind of emulate that. Uh, gives you a little bit more options. Uh, the mounting is pretty much hands down superior to the BDH. I do think you're, you're getting more uh, shift feel for your money with this unit than the BDH, you know, per dollar. I also like the, the shifting rod setup better than the BDH. This just provides a lot more flexibility, you know. Uh, I was able to cut this rod to whatever length I deem necessary. I measured the distance for, on my real car from the, the, the pivoting point to the, uh, the top of the, the ball here. So this is the exact distance it is in my real car. And it's pretty close to the, the throw, too. Um, I'd say it's a little bit more than my real car. And I'd say the BDH is a little bit less than my real car. My transmission is still a standard factory, you know, five-speed transmission. It's not even the STI version. Uh, it does have different gear ratios, but, uh, you know, that, that has nothing to do with the feel of the throw. There is a short throw shifter kit on my, my 06 WRX, so it's a bit shorter than, than, than factory. But this better replicates the distance uh, between gears than the BDH does, in my opinion. The neutral side-to-side -side is satisfying it's it's not lacking in any, any way i'd say this one feels a little bit more granular like i can kind of feel things moving around this is on a big delrin ball so it, it's a little bit more glidey not as much feel but now we're going to mount the bdh up and and keep in mind i, I have the the shell off like the the covering um because I, I just it's just extra weight and i don't think the dust is going to really affect any of these parts Okay, well, we got it all mounted up. It's some days later. I don't know how many days later, but uh, everything's working great. So I had some issues at first with the shifter. When it was shipped, this screw had come loose on the bottom here, which absolutely wreaked havoc on the unit. And I put some Loctite or some uh, thread locker on the end of this screw and screwed it in. Uh, not super tight, but just kind of snug and let it sit there overnight. I also had to, to file down this little tooth a little bit because... I was causing it to go from second back into first, right? Now it goes into third every time. But before I filed this little tooth down, it made it to where every time I would try to go into third with an open palm. And when I say open, I just may mean like I'm not like holding on to it, like, like death gripping it, right? Like uh, I'm not like literally just going like this. I was making it go back into first on accident. So as you, you would imagine in games, I was blowing my engine <laughs> left and right and I was kind of upset. But uh, yeah, after I filed this tooth down, we're golden. Uh, it works every single time. So this was the little mod that he created, or I guess came up with. Yeah. This is the manual lockout mod. <laughs> it's just a piece of uh, aluminum here. Just a piece of bent aluminum. I, I don't know what, what it is, if it's like some kind of trim or something. You just put it over the last set of teeth, and it makes it to where you can't physically go past there. Even though it's pretty difficult to go over to the 7th and 8th gear, on accident, I've done it before. So, because I'm so used to, you know, hitting that wall and then shifting, you know, just by feel. For the entire review, I will be using it in this mode with the physical lockout. So, I, I have no use for a seven speed. If I go to seven speeds, um, I'm gonna use my sequential, which is above it. Here we go, these are my pace notes. It's my voice in the background. So if I'm not talking, I'm still talking kind of. <laughs> right one. Left two, 50, square left, over tarmac. 100. Right five, 50. The shifter feels four, really good. 50. I probably shouldn't talk during this right stage because I don't know it, left but. Left two. 
Oh shit. I don't know what he said. I don't know what I said. Then caution. Oh, right I heard left two. No cut. Then left three over dirt. Then right one. Yeah, the shifter feels amazing. I have it kind of set to where uh, the, the resistance is kind of almost maxed out. I don't really have this expensive of a you know, transmission or H pattern in real life. So I can't really compare to it 100% with my real car. But I can say that it feels very good. I'd say it feels more sharp. Sim Vertex Left feels two. more round in terms of the shifts and the uh, and point two. The actual shifts themselves on the Sim Vertex, like there's a longer throw. Then right two. In it's a pleasant right. way. So it kind of feels more like a road car. Then left one. Um, that's one thing I really like about the Sim Vertex more than the uh, two. The VDH. No fault of VDH and though, because two. they're modeling their shifter after. A uh, quake shifter in real life. Then right one, don't cut. If I don't like anything about this design, Press it has everything to do with uh, right four, don't cut. the when real I'm life shifter. Like, let's just one, pass this shit. Cut. When you're in first gear, or third gear, or fifth gear, there's very little play, right? But in second gear, fourth gear, and reverse, there's quite a bit of play. You know, like in neutral, there's a lot of play, right? Just in all directions. In third, there's very little play in all directions. Fifth, same thing, probably even less play than third. And in first, there's zero play at all. So it's just kind of odd to me that in certain gears, there's tons of play. Like I I'm in gear right now, and it, there's a lot of play. I don't know if this is because my particular unit is not properly calibrated or whatever, but um, it's not something you notice while you're using it. Like, you don't notice it at, at all. But it's, it's one of those things like when I'm just sitting here messing around with it, it kind of bothers me mentally. But yeah, like it doesn't matter in game. Like it hasn't affected my performance at all. But that is worth noting. The Sim Vertex doesn't have that. So when you're in a gear, there's very little play. And when you're in neutral, there's zero play. I'd say of the two, the BDH does feel more realistic. I don't like the shift knob. I don't like the shape of it. I don't like how small it is. Um, it doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I just don't... I, I just would prefer a little bit larger shift knob, and I, I don't like this teardrop shape, and I don't like that it's flat on top here. I wish it was round on top. I would prefer uh, a more traditional shape. But again, he could be modeling it after a shifter that I'm not familiar with at all. So, um, you know, you can switch it out. Know that he can pretty much make it anything you want. I do like that you can do all the adjustments from here by hand. And that's something that, that they really have over the Sim Vertex because, you know, you have to actually get a tool. You can't do it by hand. And to BDH, I suggest putting a knurled screw in here as opposed to like a smooth one because, you know, when you got some greasy ass fingers, you've been eating pizza or whatever you know, um, you're gonna have a harder time gripping this and adjusting it if you want to adjust it per car, you know. That's a cool feature, like like I said, you can just unscrew that real quick and then loosen it up and adjust it per car. Currently, it's kind of hard to get a hold of it because it's so smooth. And uh, yeah, if you got like sweaty hands or greasy hands, you're not gonna have a good time. But it is doable without tools, and I really like that a lot. I'm not the biggest fan of micro switches. I would prefer both of these be Hall Effect sensors. A lot less can go wrong with that technology. So I, I do think in the future, you know, please both of you, SimVertex and BDH, move on to Hall Effect sensors. I think it's the future. The price is definitely off-putting for the BDH. There's, it's, it's a hard sell, you know. A lot of people aren't, aren't willing to spend more than, you know, 100, 200 bucks on a shifter. And this is well past that. <laughs> You're looking at a thousand plus American dollars to get a hold of one of these. The Sim Vertex is kind of in the middle ground there. It is cheaper, you know, and it still feels great. So if cost is your biggest concern, yeah, I can recommend the Sim Vertex all day. It's a great shifter. Uh, customer service, like I said, like BDH is right there. You know, I can't say the same for Sim Vertex, even though they have responded to all of my messages. Sometimes it's taken them, um, you know, weeks maybe even up to a month, depending on uh, you know, how busy they are. That is something to take into consideration. Versatility-wise, the BDH far outshines the Sim Vertex because you, know, you could turn this entire unit uh, 90 degrees either way, 
um, and you can mount it to the side of your rig rather than to the top of your rig. And that's a really huge feature for this. You do have to do some fiddling with it, but you know, if, if it's what you need to fit on, on your setup and you don't want to have to change your configuration, it's the option is there, you know. So this is actually a great can holder. <laughs> also, mounting this thing is not fun. You can use a different type of mounting hardware. It kind of takes like an open-ended wrench, and you can just wrench it down from the side. But the fact that you have to use specific hardware for this makes it a pain in the ass. If you don't have that hardware, you'd have to unscrew eight of these <laughs> screws here, take this unit off, and then, you know, the, the wires, the circuit board's kind of exposed, and then you have to uh, mount the, the base on while all of this is kind of off. That's the only other option unless you want to use that hardware where you just get an open-ended wrench, which is obviously easier, and you should probably do that, but I didn't have any of that. So I only had the kind with the Allen keys. So it was quicker for me to have to undo these screws than it was to go down to the store and go buy those screws. Also, I didn't want to go out of the house. I wanted to use my new shifter. So I contacted BDH about the lack of hardware and they agree in the future they will be including the hardware they expect you to use with this unit. Another thing that I wish they would do is increase the slot size so you could you have more side to side adjustment. You know, if I want it to be a little bit more to the right or a little bit more to the left, I want to have that option. Please, BDH, in the future, make the slots bigger on all sides. I also wish Sim Vertex would increase their slot size, maybe that thick in the middle between slots. Weight-wise, they're about the same. This thing is actually pretty meaty. I had always envisioned this as being a pretty lightweight thing, but when I took it off my rig, I realized I was wrong. Um, these are pretty similar in weight. I don't like that you can lift up on the stick like this. I, I actually really dislike that. Um, but again, it could be because he's replicating the design of a real shifter. I don't know. I've never experienced the real one. But I, I don't like that at all. If you mount this up high, it does have a possibility of lifting up like this. You know, and, and the shape of the, the shift knob makes this even easier. Pretend this shift knob is about, you know, a, a foot higher and you want to, you know, emulate like a truck or whatever, right? If you open palm it and shift into third, you can actually make it to where it pops up entirely, like out, out of the gear. It'll go back in as soon as you want to go to fourth, right? But just the fact that it can do that is, uh, it's upsetting to me. It's not something that happens to me based on my positioning, but if you did want to mount this up higher, like in more of a truck position, that could be a problem for you. If you're shifting it low and you're kind of emulating a race car, this is not an issue. So if you play Richard Burns Rally like I do, you'll know that that game has a lot of issues with different types of hardware, you know, uh, different peripherals. Uh, this wheelbase I have, this Camus wheelbase, I had to change some things in the registry to make it work. You know, so that's, that's an example of how friendly Richard Burns Rally is to gear. Let's say I want to map out left to this first gear, right? As soon as I press enter, Z axis appears. So it's interpreting the circuit board as an axis and it's a constant force. It's a, it's a constant thing. As soon as I push enter, I need to get it into gear right away. You know, sometimes it, it misses. There we go. Got it. We have to time it out perfectly. It's, it's difficult to get it all mapped up. And it, it also interferes with other controls. Like, um, let's say you don't want to map the H pattern. You want to map your sequential. As long as this shifter is connected, it'll constantly be receiving that Z axis input. You know, it doesn't matter what you try. Now, I, I contacted BDH about this as well. They're talking with Leo Bodner. He's a reputable circuit board maker slash a lot of other things, I think. So he's talking with him and trying to figure this out. Um, I think it happens in Forza Horizon 5 as well. Not to say that this shifter does not work with these games. It's just a pain in the ass to set up. Once you got it set up, you're fine. You don't need to do it over again. But uh, just know that the shifter works and know that BDH is working on this issue. Other modern games like Dirt Rally 2, Set of Corsa, whatever, they have no issues at all. The only reason BDH didn't know about this is because they didn't know about Richard Burns Rally. They didn't know how far it's come along, the modding scene and everything. It is frustrating though, but I, I do need to let you know about that. Otherwise, I would feel wrong to <laughs> release a review and not mention everything that I've come across, you know. So now we're just going to drive some more. Um, I'm just going to give you my final thoughts on both shifters and... Uh, yeah, we'll see what I can squeeze in while I'm thinking about all these corners. Do I feel that, you know, it's worth extra money? Yes, 50? I do. For for someone looking for, for 
interest, more realism, um, a specific feel, you know, like a sort of a sharper, shifting feel. I can definitely recommend this, you know. But to the average person, both of these shifters are too expensive. Then right four, then right one. So it's hard to recommend either of these shifters really to the average person. You know, if you're happy with your fanatic shifter or your Thrustmaster shifter or Logitech or whatever, both of these are not good options for you. This is only for the people that are 100% are focused on immersion and, uh, you know, at any cost kind of thing. If price is your number one concern, get the Sim Vertex. It's a lot of shifter for the money, and you'll be extremely pleased. If the overall quality of the shifting and customer service are your top priorities, get the BDH. As far as this comparison is concerned, this will be staying on my rig, and the Sim Vertex will be my backup H pattern shifter. Have a good day. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in a future video. I'll take it.